Hello and welcome again everybody. This is Cuba Fantasy from CubaFantasy.wordpress.com, a fantasy football blog. Go check it out. If you got some free time, you can read about everything I talk about in these videos. This is part two of my preseason thoughts. These games from August 12th of last week. And I'm just going to jump right into it so I don't take up too much of your time. First game I'm talking about is Miami Dolphins. That's Do It Boys versus the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Dolphins, uh, Chad Henney. Wow. I looked at the stat line in this game. When I got home at about 8 o'clock, game started at 7.30, and he was one for four of the pick. And within about five minutes, he was one for or one for five of the pick, or two picks. So Chad Henney scares me as a Dolphins fan. He has for the last two years, and he is again this year. Uh, but then he goes in the next possession and leads us for about a 70-yard drive and throws a 44-yard TD bomb to Brian Hartline. So I just don't know what to do with Chad Henney. I'm just going to keep on praying and hoping that one day something clicks and he can do that on a regular basis. Right now, it doesn't look like he's ready to literally lead an NFL team on a weekly basis. Uh, Matt Moore came in in relief and went 11 of 18 for 123 yards and two TDs as compared to, uh, with one interception as compared to Chad Henney's one, one, one TD and two picks. So Matt Moore actually had the better day. Uh, second year wide receiver Roberto Wallace, who I'm really pumped on. He looks like Brandon Marshall. He's got the body like Brandon Marshall. If he can learn to play like Brandon Marshall, that'd be a nice tandem. Uh, he had three catches for 60 yards, including a 28-yard TD pass from Moore. Uh, so he was looking really good. I got a lot of hope for him as a, as a Dolphins fan. Rookie wide receiver Edmund Gates was in the action. He had a six-yard TD pass along with another 17-yard reception. So he was looking pretty good. Both those TDs were from uh, Matt Moore. We didn't really see a whole lot of Daniel Thomas. He only had five or four rushes for five yards. Not too great. Um, but it was his first action, and he had a 25-yard catch and run. So that was very nice. The Falcons, Matt Ryan was looking as solid as ever. He had a 17-0 lead for his team pretty quickly until they put their backups in and Miami came back to win it. But he connected twice with his rookie wide receiver, Julio Jones. I'm sure all you Falcons fans are loving. A uh, 21-yard and a 22-yard gain each. Uh, Matt Ryan ended 6-10 for 90 yards and a TD. As mentioned before, Julio Jones looked good to go with those two catches. He had a 12-yard rush as well. So he usually showing what he's capable of. Uh, third year receiver Harry, Day Harry Douglas looked good as well. He had three catches, 47 yards. Uh, he had a very nice 20-yard TD grab. Uh, Michael, you're going to be hearing more about this Harry Douglas guy next er, in my next video for this week as well, from August like 18, 19, because he looked great again then. Michael Turner looked good in his limited action. He only had four carries, 21 yards, but one was a two-yard TD run where he just bowled through like five people, which is what he does. And then moving on to the next game, Detroit Lions, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Lions came out firing. Matt Stafford uh, threw a TD pass to Megatron, then another TD pass to Nate Burleson. So he looked great. Like I said, Megatron looked great. It was Calvin Johnson. Um, his TD grab was in coverage. Nate Burleson was very, very nice. He had to use a pretty nice little two-toe drag to stay in bounds. Uh, Javid Best only had four touches on the ball, but I'm sure it's just because they want to take it easy with him. They just lost Mike LaShore for the season. So I'm sure they want to make sure they don't lose job at best. Uh, third year, a running back Aaron Brown came in for uh, four touches and 21 yards. Uh, their defense was looking pretty fired up. Uh, a lot of QB pressure, that's for sure. And Dominican Sue at one point pretty much just like threw Andy Dalton to the ground. It was kind of unnecessary, but to me, that's just kind of a guy Dominican Sue is. He's very vocal, very he gets very fired up. It's, to me, he looks like he could be he could be like a like a Ray Lewis on your front line. Uh, the Bengals. They are a rebuilding team, and that's what they played like. Um, Andy Dalton struggled. Uh, he was 11 of 15, which seems pretty accurate, but he did have an interception. Uh, they were in field goal range a couple times, but they only made one. Uh, their wide receivers all saw a bit of game time, but no one really had a huge impact. Like I'm talking about Shipley, Green, and Simpson. They all had like one, two catches, 20, 30 yards. Uh, same as the tight end, Jermaine Gresham. So we're going to have to wait to see a bit more out of these guys. Um, one of the solid parts of their game was running back Cedric Benson, who's going to need to be workhorse for them this year because they're going to be struggling as a team, I think. But he had 37 yards and only his four touches, so that's a good sign. On to the next game, it's Redskins and Steelers. Uh, they managed to beat the Steelers, but Steelers obviously playing a lot of second and third string players most of the game. Uh, Washington Redskins QB was Rex Grossman for this one for the most part, and he actually looked pretty good. He was 19 to 26 for 200 yards. He had a TD in the first half uh, to Santana Moss. Um, 
Uh, yeah, staying with Moss, he was pretty much the favorite of Rex Grossman for that game. He had seven catches, 64 yards, including that TD. I had Santana Moss in my main league last year that I played with my close friends, and I, I hate losing this league. So I had him in that league, um, and he played great for me. And I'm looking to see, I'm not saying I'm going to be drafting him or telling you to draft him, but I think you can be seeing a lot of the same from him this year, just as uh, he's definitely the most talented wide receiver for that team. Uh, Tim Hightower ran the ball well. He had 44 yards on his 10 touches, uh, while rookie running back Evan Royster saw the bulk of the touches with 66 yards and 15 carries. But like I said, like I've talked about before, he is just a kid trying to establish himself. It's going to be more about Timmy Hightower and what he'll do this year for them. Uh, Redskins kicker uh, Gano, he was the difference. Uh, he was 3 for 3 on the night. He's, uh, he's a pretty accurate kicker, this uh, Gano guy. Steelers. Not only much to talk about, it was a lot of backups. Uh, running back Isaac Redman had 42 yards in a TD. Um, only had five carries. Um, not much to really talk about with the Steelers. I'm just going to really skip through it just to save time, guys. Tampa Bay Buccaneers shot out the Kansas City Chiefs. They were looking ready to go, that's for sure. They smothered the Chiefs. Uh, Freeman looked good. Um, he ran a TD, which is great for his fantasy output because last year he had a lot of yards on the ground. He just never ran a touchdown and now in his first preseason game he found Pater with his legs so that is good fantasy value right there. Um, that was pretty much it for him that game. He was 9 of 13, 73 yards, 5 yard TD run. Uh, good signs for him though. Other than that it was an excellent defensive day for the Buccaneers. Uh, and little note here is the Buccaneers have not re-signed uh, Barrett Rudd, their defensive captain and lead tackler for the last 5 years. I think it's a weird decision. They re-signed Quincy Black and they drafted a a third round um, guy this year, uh, Mason Foster, I believe. But I don't know, he looks pretty raw. He had a pretty crucial uh, penalty against uh, Kyle Josinko, where he just smucked him in their more recent uh, preseason game. But like I said, Barrett Wright is gone from Buc the Buccaneers, but their defense still played very, very well. They even had a force of safety on the Chiefs at one point. And to talk about the Chiefs, uh, they didn't put up points. There's really not much to talk about. Castle struggled. He coughed up a fumble at one point. Finished the game without a completion before he got pulled. All Chief QBs combined for 8 of 16 with 68 yards. So not a very good day for the Chiefs. Jamal Charles wasn't even on the field, so really not much to talk about. This running back, Jackie Battle, was in there for the most part. He had uh, um, he fumbled, though. <laughs> so not really much to talk about for him. Thomas Jones only had two touches, but for 25 yards, that's a good sign. So this game, it's really hard to judge the Chiefs on this. They just struggled as a team. They put in their backups, didn't play Jamal Charles. Not much to really, not much impact here. The Saints, uh, we got to see uh, running back Mark Ingram the first time. He had six carries. He was able to have it reach a touchdown on a pretty impressive run as well. He had a little spin move and break, and keep some balance. So uh, for Saints fans and guys looking at Mark Ingram, he actually did so shines of being a good running back in his rookie year. Another player who made a name for himself was uh, rookie running back Joe Morgan. It's a very crowded, wide-out position in uh, uh, New Orleans, it always seems to be. But Joe Morgan made his case, just took around, and it wasn't with his receiving day, but it was with his uh, return touchdown. He took a punt return, 78 yards for a TD. And if you've got time, click on the link in my blog at coopafantasy.wordpress.com. In the article, click on the link to watch the video of this kid's return. It's pretty impressive. Um, the New Orleans defense looked like they wanted to take Alex Smith's head off at one point. They sacked him three times in the first quarter. Then the rookie uh, QB, Colin Kaepernick, came in, and he didn't fare any better as he was sacked three times as well. Um, so not much good came from this game of the 49ers, aside from some much-needed game time. QB Alex Smith and rookie Colin Kaepernick, they both struggled. Smith finished 2 of 7 for 10 yards. Uh, Kaepernick was 9 of 19 for 117 yards and 2 picks. Um, Kaepernick was, however, effective scrambling. He had 47 yards with his feet, including 128-yard gash. So, uh, that's, uh, but Gore didn't see much action. Uh, he had 20 yards in his 4 touches. So that's, uh, that's the end of the games here, guys. Uh, I'm going to talk about, once again, the notable players. Uh, guys who played well were Matt Stafford, Josh Freeman, Rex Grossman, Mark Ingram, Thomas Jones, Matt Ryan, Calvin Johnson, Nate Burleson, New Orleans and Detroit special teams, Santana Moss, uh, the Bucks special teams, and Julio Jones. So these are guys who are expected to be good and are showing signs that they will be good. 
um, guys who struggled were Andy Dalton, uh, Alex Smith, Matt Castle, Chad Henney, Colin Kaepernick. It's just a bunch of QBs who didn't play very well. And guys who played well in their very limited game time were Frank Gore and Tedrick Benson. And uh, um, Matt Moore also looked good for uh, Miami. Uh, players that are going to make a name for themselves were uh, Joe Morgan and Roberto Wallace. These guys both uh, had good games, respectively. Roberto Wallace for Miami and Joe Morgan for uh, New Orleans. That's the end of the article, guys. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could take the time. Check out my blog, koopafantasy.wordpress.com. Read any articles. I got schedules, rankings. I got mixed bags of sleepers, guys who are overvalued, guys who are undervalued. Uh, dinosaurs, young guns, just I got all kinds of stuff. Go check it out. If you're bored, you want to get your fantasy football fix, go check it out. CoopaFantasy.wordpress.com. You can follow me on Twitter if you'd really like. Uh, Blackie underscore Mike. Blackie ends with I-E. Um, that's really about all I can ask you guys right now. Like my video, subscribe to my channel if you'd really like to. Um, peace.